Welcome to the Ultimate Sports Blog Podcast. Today is Friday, March 1st, 2019. A lot to get to today. College basketball, NBA, NHL, spring training, my mock bracket, a somewhat surprising coaching change in the NHL, and my best bet of the day. We'll start in college basketball where there were a ton of games played last night, some upsets, some not-so-surprising results. I'm just going to go through the scores and the records. Sacred Heart defeats Robert Morris, 87-63. to Sacred Heart, 14-16. Robert Morris, 15-15. St. Francis, Pennsylvania defeats Wagner, 83-72. St. Francis, 16-12. Wagner, 13-15. Xavier defeats St. John's 84-73. Xavier 16-13. St. John's 20-9. Number 9, Michigan defeats Nebraska 82-53. Michigan 25-4. Nebraska 15-14. Number 24, Wofford defeats Chattanooga 80-54. Wofford 25-4. Chattanooga 12-18. Hofstra defeats Drexel 80-77. Hofstra 24-6. Drexel 13-17. Northeastern defeats Delaware 75-64. Northeastern 19-10. Delaware 16-14. Alon defeats James Madison, 73-58. Alon, 10-20. James Madison, 13-17. Wichita State defeats UConn, 65-63. Wichita, 14-13. UConn, 13-15. William & Mary defeats Towson, 67-65. William & Mary, 13-16. Towson, 10-20. New Mexico State defeats UMKC, 75-55. New Mexico State, 25-40. UMKC, 10-19. St. Francis Brooklyn defeats Bryant 74-66. St. Francis Brooklyn 17-13. Bryant 10-18. Georgia Southern defeats Little Rock 81-66. Georgia Southern 19-10. Little Rock 10-18. Texas State defeats Troy 58-44. Texas State 23-6. Troy 11-16. Georgia State defeats Arkansas State 76-60. Georgia State 29. Arkansas State 12-16. Hampton defeats Winthrop 90 to 75. Hampton 13 to 15. Winthrop 18 and 11. Fairleigh Dickinson defeats St. Mary's 65 59. Fairleigh Dickinson 16 and 13. Mount St. Mary's 8 and 22. VMI defeats Mercer 84 71. VMI 9 and 20. Mercer 11 and 18. UNC Greensboro defeats the Citadel 100 to 96. Greensboro 25 and 5. Citadel 12 and 16. Oakland defeats UIC 86-72. Oakland 14-16. UIC 15-15. LIU Brooklyn defeats Central Connecticut State 84-55. LIU 14-15. Central Connecticut 11-19. Western Kentucky defeats UAB 73-67. Western Kentucky 17-12. UAB 17-12. Marshall defeats Louisiana Tech 90-79. Marshall 15-13. Louisiana Tech 18-11. Eastern Kentucky defeats Austin P 82-80. Eastern Kentucky 13 and 17. Austin P 21 and 9. Furman defeats Stanford 90-81. Furman 23 and 6. Stanford 16 and 13. Murray State defeats Morehead State 71-52. Murray State 24 and 4. Morehead 11 and 19. Green Bay defeats Wright State 70 to 67. Green Bay 16 and 14. Wright State 18 and 12. Northern Kentucky defeats. Milwaukee, 65-55. Northern Kentucky, 22-8. Milwaukee, 9-21. Old Dominion defeats UTSA, 65-64. Old Dominion, 23-6. UTSA, 15-13. FAU defeats North Texas, 16-54. FAU, 17-12. North Texas, 20-9. Detroit Mercy defeats IUPUI, 87-85. Detroit Mercy, 11-18. IUPUI, 16-14. Texas Arlington defeats South Alabama, 75-57. Texas Arlington, 14-15. South Alabama, 13-15. UL Monroe defeats Appalachian State, 81-75. UL Monroe, 15-12. Appalachian State, 9-19. Louisiana defeats Coastal Carolina, 83-70. Louisiana, 17-11. Coastal Carolina, 13-14. Texas Rio Grande defeats Chicago State, 82-77. Rio Grande, 17-14. Chicago State, 3-26. SAU Edwardsville defeats Tennessee Tech, 76-68. Edwardsville, 10-19. Tech, 7-23. Belmont defeats Tennessee Martin 112 to 67. Belmont 24 and 4. Tennessee Martin 10 and 18. Oral Roberts defeats Omaha 84 80. Oral Roberts 11 and 20. Omaha 18 and 10. North Dakota defeats Purdue Fort Wayne 88 82. North Dakota 12 and 16. Purdue Fort Wayne 17 and 13. Southeast Missouri State defeats Tennessee State 89 74. Southeast Missouri 10 and 20. Tennessee State 9 and 20. 
Jacksonville State defeats Eastern Illinois, 89-84 in double overtime. Jacksonville State, 22-8. Eastern Illinois, 14-16. and South Dakota defeats North Dakota State, 75-65. South Dakota, 12-16. North Dakota, 14-15. Denver defeats Western Illinois, 74-46. Denver, 8-21. Western Illinois, 9-19. Tulsa defeats Tulane, 72-64. Tulane drops to an ugly 4-23 as Tulsa goes to 17-12. Minnesota defeats Northwestern, 62-50. Much needed win for Minnesota, who goes to 18-11. Northwestern drops to 12-16. Northern Colorado defeats Weber State, 85-61. Northern Colorado, 19-9. Weber, 16-12. Arizona defeats Oregon State, 74-72. Arizona, 17-12. Oregon, 17-10. Stanford defeats Washington State 98 to 50. Stanford 15 and 13. Washington State 11 and 17. UCLA defeats USC 93 88 in overtime. UCLA 16 and 13. USC 15 and 14. Sacramento State defeats Eastern Washington 59 56. Sacramento State 13 and 13. Eastern Washington 11 and 17. Portland State defeats Idaho 67 65. Portland State 14 and 14. Idaho 4 and 24. San Diego defeats San Francisco 91-90 in overtime. San Diego 18-12. San Francisco 21-8. Seattle defeats Cal Baptist 67-65. Seattle 16-13. Cal Baptist 15-12. CSU Fullerton defeats Cal Poly 86-75. Fullerton 14-14. Poly 6-20. Long Beach State defeats UC Santa Barbara 69-64. Long Beach State 12-18. Santa Barbara 19-9. Number 1 Gonzaga defeats Pacific 86-66. Gonzaga 28-2, Pacific 13-17. Cal upsets number 25, Washington 76-73. First conference win of the year for Cal, I believe. Yeah, Cal captures first win since December. Wow. 6-22 they are now, and Washington drops to 22-6. UC Irvine defeats UC Davis 64-48. Davis drops to 10-17. Irvine improves to 24-5. Oregon defeats Arizona State 79-51. Money line loses in college basketball. Oregon improves to 16-12. Arizona State drops to 19-9. St. Mary's defeats Portland 65-48. St. Mary's 20-10. And, and Portland 7-23. Loyal Marymount defeats Santa Clara 72-70. Marymount 19-10. Santa Clara 15-14. Small slate tonight, 11 games. 5 o'clock on... ESPNU, Columbia at Brown. Brown's favored by four and a half. I'm going to take Brown the winning cover. They've played well in conference. And Columbia is not a good team. CBS Sports Network at six o'clock. Kent State at Bowling Green. Bowling Green's favored by five and a half. I'm taking Bowling Green the win, but Kent State the cover. Seven o'clock on ESPN2. Rhode Island at Dayton. Dayton seven point favorites. They are making a compelling at large case. And I think they're going to win and cover here. Knipiak at St. Peter's. Cornell at Yale. Princeton at Dartmouth. Penn at Harvard on ESPNU. Harvard's favored by four and a half. I think they'll win and cover. Penn has dropped off in conference play. Iona at Ryder. Monmouth at Manhattan. Marist at Fairfield. Florida Gulf Coast at Jacksonville. So there's about 15 games. There's a couple I miscounted. Liberty at NJIT, Lipscomb at North Alabama, Stetson at Kennesaw State, 8 o'clock CBS Sports Network, number 21, Buffalo at Miami of Ohio. Buffalo's eight and a half point favorites. I think they're going to win and they're going to cover. And then 9 o'clock ESPNU, Siena at Canisius. Canisius is favored by a point and a half. I think the wrong team is favored here. Siena is better in conference play and overall. I'm taking Siena to win outright on the road. NBA. Smaller slate last night. The Pacers defeat the Timberwolves 122 to 115. Indiana is 41 and 22. Minnesota drops to 29 and 33. The Magic upset the Warriors 103 96. Kevin Durant and Andre Iguodala didn't play. Durant due to rest and Iguodala had an illness. Orlando 29 and 34. Golden State drops to 43 and 19. The Cavaliers defeat the Knicks 125 118 in a th- tankathon. Cavs 15 and 47, Knicks 13 and 49. The Rockets come from behind to beat the Heat 121 to 118. So the Miami Heat have their letdown in the fourth quarter. They drop to 27 and 34. Houston improves to 37 and 25. 
76ers defeat the Thunder 108-104. No Paul George and no Joel Embiid for their respective teams. Philly goes to 40-22. Oklahoma City drops to 38-23. The Jazz upset the Nuggets 111-104. A very good win for Utah. 35-26 on the air. Denver drops to 42-19 and blow a golden opportunity to jump ahead of the Warriors in the Western Conference standings. Tonight's games... 7.30 7.30 of the Bulls at the Hawks, a somewhat of a tankathon game, even though Atlanta is playing really well. Chicago is winning pretty much too many games to get into the bottom three. The Knicks losing certainly hurt Chicago. Meanwhile, the loser, or I'm sorry, the winner of that game, winner slash loser would have uh, helped and hurt in Chicago at the same time because Especially if Cleveland had lost, or I'm sorry, had they won. Because Cleveland now is 15 wins, Knicks are stuck at 13. If both of those teams ended up at 14 wins, it's a better result for the Bulls. So that was kind of a loss for the Bulls last night. So they're at the Hawks. The Hornets are at the Nets. 8 o'clock ESPN on the call. This game will be Mark Jones and Doris Burke. The Trailblazers are at the Raptors. Blazers have won five straight. I think that comes to an end tonight against... Kawhi Leonard and the Raptors. Wizards at the Celtics must win for the Celtics. 9 o'clock, the Pelicans at the Suns, another tankathon game. I think it's a winnable game for Phoenix, and I think if Phoenix wins this game, it's a monster for the Knicks. So, Knicks fans and Cavs fans better be rooting for Phoenix, although I think the Cavs took a brutal W last night, even though... uh, you need bottom three record to have a great chance or a, somewhat of a great chance at Zion Williamson. So that's why the Bulls are stuck in a bad position right now. Because I don't think that anybody's going to catch them, especially if they win tonight. So Phoenix and New Orleans in another somewhat of a tankathon game. 10 o'clock, the Clippers at the Kings battle. For the eight seed, this is the biggest game of the Kings season, in my opinion. Actually, I think the last two playoff spots in the West are up for grabs. I am dubious of San Antonio. I did not like their East Coast trip. They lost to the Knicks. They lost to Brooklyn. And they beat the Pistons at home recently, but I don't think the Pistons are that great. So I think the last two playoff spots are up for grabs, and I think they are the Kings and, dare I say, the Lakers to lose. As the Lakers tonight on 10.30 on ESPN host the Bucks. it's Ryan Rucco on the call with... You know what? I think it Rucco's with Burke, and I think that um, Mark Jones is with Hubie Brown. So that's a mistake by me. As I thought, I saw Rucco tweet last night that he's with Doris Burke on the Laker game. Milwaukee's laying five. I'm taking the Lakers to win outright. They play well at home. LeBron James shows up when other stars come to town, especially the MVP favoring Giannis Zetokounmpo. I expect a big performance out of LeBron, and I do think the Lakers find a way to win this game behind their home crowd as they try to... Still one of the final playoff spots in the Western Conference. So give me the Lakers at home to upset the Milwaukee Bucks. NHL. Seven games late last night. And what was the most anticipated game of the night? The Islanders defeat the Maple Leafs 6-1 and John Tavares' return to the island. He gets heavily booed. Fans were chanting. And Tavares came out after the game and said that's what he pretty much expected as Toronto drops to 39-21-4 as the Islanders get... A huge win to improve the 37-19-7 on the season. The Blue Jackets defeat the Flyers 4-3 in overtime. A huge win for Columbus. They are 36-24-3. Phillies 30-26-8. The Bruins defeat the Lightning 4-1. The Lightning finally lose a game in regulation. Their winning streak's over. They drop the 49-12-4. Boston improves the 38-17-9. They have not lost in regulation. The Bruins in over a month. The Oilers defeat the Senators 4-2. Edmonton is 27-30-7. Ottawa, 22-37-5. The Coyotes defeat the Canucks 5-2. Coyotes 31-28-5. Vancouver, 27-29-9. 
The Golden Knights defeat the Panthers 6-5 in a shootout. Huge win for Vegas. They are on the season 34-26-5. Florida 28-25-10. The Stars defeat the Kings 4-3 in overtime. Dallas, huge win 32-27-5. LA 23-33-8. Tonight's slate, you have eight games. 7 o'clock, the Canadians at the Rangers. Somewhat of a trap game for Montreal. They have a back-to-back -back coming up with Rangers-Pittsburgh. Penguins at the Sabres is the first of a back-to-back -back for Pittsburgh. Flyers at the Devils. The Flyers are on the second of a back-to-back. -back. Capitals at the Islanders. Islanders are on the second of a back-to-back. -back. This game is going to be at the Coliseum. 7.30, the Blues at the Hurricanes. 8 o'clock, the Predators at the Jets. That's a big one in the Central Division. 10 o'clock, the Golden Knights at the Ducks. The Golden Knights are on the second of a back-to-back. -back. And then 10.30, the Avalanche at the Sharks. No games on NBCSN tonight. Going to talk about some spring training results from yesterday. I didn't get to spring training yesterday because of the Jason Witten news breaking in the middle of my podcast recording. The Yankees defeat the Pirates 8-6. Troy Tulowitzki's had a fantastic spring training so far. He has two home runs. That was the second one he hit the other day. Tyler Wade, who's battling to get a roster spot at a home run. Jungo Kang of Pittsburgh hit a home run on top of the first off of Jay Happ, who did not have a good outing for the Yankees. An inning in a third, three at three, and runs in a strikeout. And Stephen Brault started for Pittsburgh. An inning, three hits, four runs, four walks, and a strikeout. The Orioles and the Phillies tied at five among notable things. Use Neil Diaz, the hot prospect they got. The Orioles in the Manny Machado trade hit an RBI double. Alcides Escobar had an RBI single in this game. And obviously this was a fun day for Philly fans because the news broke that the team had signed Bryce Harper. Dylan Bundy pitched for the Orioles. Two innings. Four, it's an earned run and two strikeouts. The Tigers defeat the Braves 7-6. Mickey Matoke got an RBI single. Willie Castro homered for Detroit. Matt Moore started two in the third innings. Three, it's two earned runs and three strikeouts. Tuki Tucson started for Atlanta. Poor outing by him. An inning for its five run runs, two strikeouts, and a walk. The Astros defeat the Marlins 7 to 5. Brad Peacock got the win in this game for Houston. Two innings, two strikeouts. So maybe he ends up in their rotation to start the season. Carlos Correa had an RBI double in the bottom of the first inning of this game for Houston. Sandy Alcantara started for Miami. He was a prospect that came over in the Marcelo Zuna trade from the St. Louis Cardinals. Two innings, two hits, two and runs, three walks, three strikeouts. I think he has a chance to be their breakout pitcher this year. The Mets defeat the Cardinals 3-2. to two. Jason Vargas actually started the game for the Mets. Two innings, a hit, and a run, a walk, and three strikeouts. Matt Carpenter homered off of Vargas. Miles Mikolas started, three innings, five hits, and a walk. Jack Flaherty came out in relief, three innings, three hits, two in runs, and five strikeouts, and a walk. The Red Sox defeat the Nationals 13-5. Matt Adams homered for Washington in the second inning. And then the Nats were up 5-0. And then the Red Sox scored all 13 runs unanswered. Hector Velasquez started for them. Two innings, four, it's three runs, and two strikeouts. Max Scherzer started for Washington. Looked like himself. Three innings, a hit, no one runs, no walks, and four strikeouts. The Phillies defeat the Blue Jays 11-5. So a split squad for the team that signed Bryce Harper yesterday. Dylan Cousins homered in the top of the first inning off of Ryan Barocchi, who went two innings, four, it's five earned runs through Ox and a strikeout. 
Andrew Knapp hit an RBI single in the game. Randall Gritchick homered in the bottom of the third for Toronto. The Rockies and the Dodgers tied at seven. Ian Desmond hit a homer in the top of the third. Cody Bellinger hit a two-run shot in the bottom of the fifth. Chad Bettis pitched for Colorado, three innings, three hits, two and runs, a walk and a strikeout. Rich Hill pitched for the Dodgers, two and a third innings, two hits, and two strikeouts. He looked pretty solid. The Brewers defeat the Reds, 10 to 8. Mike Moustakas homered in the top of the second. Jesse Winker homered in the bottom of the third. RBI single for Eugenio Suarez in the bottom of the third. RBI double, two. R- oh, yeah, two run RBI double for Matt Kemp in the bottom of the fourth. Two run homer for Yasiel Puig. But a lot of the minor league guys from the Brewers led the comeback for them. Brandon Woodruff pitched for Milwaukee and pitched excellent in inning. No hits, no one runs, but three walks. So it wasn't that excellent. I was reading the wrong column. I thought the three was strikeouts. That's my bad. The Royals defeat the Padres 3-2. to two. Luis Urias homered in the top of the third for San Diego. Eric Lauer pitched two innings, two hits. I'm sorry, no hits. No one runs two walks and two strikeouts. Jorge Lopez pitched to the Royals. Two innings, a hit. No one runs, a walk, and two strikeouts. Jake Dykeman was the one that gave up the homer to Urias. The Athletics defeat the Cubs 10-3. Among notable things that happened, Brett Anderson pitched for Oakland, three innings, two hits, no one runs, a walk, and three strikeouts. Kyle Hendricks pitched for the Cubs, two innings, two hits, no one runs, no walks, and a strikeout. The Giants defeat the Brewers 6-2, to two, so the Brewers had a split squad. Mack Williamson hit a two-run homer in the top of the fourth. Eric Kratz hit a two-run homer in the bottom of the fourth. Chris Stratton pitched for the Giants, three innings, a hit, no one runs, a walk, and three strikeouts. Freddie Peralta pitched for Milwaukee. A clean inning with no hits, no one runs, no walks, no strikeouts either. The Mariners defeat the White Sox 8-3. Tim Anderson homered in the top of the fourth. Lucas Giolito pitched. Two innings, three hits, an earned run, no walks, and two strikeouts. Felix Hernandez pitched for the Mariners. Three innings, three hits, two earned runs, a walk, and four strikeouts. The Diamondbacks defeat the Indians 10 to 7. A lot of runs in this game, obviously. Jose Ramirez hit a three run home run in the top of the fourth inning. The Rangers defeat the Angels 10 to 6. Matt Davidson and Ronald Guzman each homered in the top of the second inning. Drew Smiley gets the win. Tyler Sags got the loss. And Smiley an inning, no hits, no one runs, no walks, and no strikeouts. Tyler Skaggs, an inning and two-thirds, two hits, four and runs, two walks, and four strikeouts. And the Rays defeat the Twins 1-0. And it was a pitch game very well from both sides. The only run of the game came on an RBI single in the bottom of the sixth. By the backup shortstop of the Rays, or one of the backups, Lucius Fox. Blake Snell pitched for Tampa, an inning, no hits, no one runs, a walk, and two strikeouts. Games are going on everywhere right now in spring training. Now I'm going to do my mock bracket for this week. I'm going to do multiple mock brackets starting next week. Because, obviously, the conference tournaments start next week. And I'm probably going to do one each and every day, which won't be easy. Because there's going to be a lot of upsets in the conference tournaments and whatnot. And some unexpected results. And that happens each and every year where the favorite in every lower conference loses early. And then some random team comes out of nowhere. UMBC was a great example of this last year. 
they weren't favored to win their league, and then they got hot and won that tournament, and obviously they made history by becoming the first 16 seed to upset a one. And then obviously Loyola Chicago, I believe, was an instance of this as well. I believe they were a team that wasn't favored to win their league. And then I, if I, for some reason, I think they were an at-large too, if I'm not mistaken. I think that was an at-large. I think they were an 11 seed. So that's kind of weird. I guess they won a lot of um, big non-con games last year. Unless they were a 13 seed and got the auto bid. I really don't remember. My memory's very shoddy. All right, one seeds. The number one overall seed. The Gonzaga Bulldogs. Obviously in the West region. Number two overall seed. Number one seed in the East, the Duke Blue Devils. Number three overall seed with the number one seed in the South region, the Virginia Cavaliers. Number four overall seed. Number one seed in the Midwest region, the Kentucky Wildcats. My two seeds. In the Midwest, the Michigan State Spartans. In the South, the Michigan Wolverines. The West, the North Carolina Tar Heels. And the East, the Tennessee Volunteers. Your three seeds in the East. The Houston Cougars. In the South, the LSU Tigers. The Midwest, the Texas Tech Red Raiders. And the West, the Purdue Boilermakers. Your four seeds from the South, the Kansas State Wildcats. The East, the Kansas Jayhawks. The Midwest, the Cincinnati Bearcats. And the West, the Marquette Golden Eagles. The, my five seeds in the South, the Nevada Wolf Pack. Midwest, the Virginia Tech Cokies, the West, Florida State Seminoles, and the East, the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Six seeds. Midwest, Villanova, South, Wofford. Can't believe I'm saying that. Wofford. East, Iowa. West, Ole Miss. Seven seeds. East, Wisconsin, Midwest, Syracuse, West, Maryland, South, VCU. Good for VCU by uh, getting up to seven. Eight seeds. South. Washington. Had they won that game, they'd be a six against Cal. That Cal loss is going to cost them two seed lines, I guarantee you. Midwest. Baylor. East. Buffalo. West. Iowa State. Nine seeds. East. St. John. South. TCU. West. Auburn. Midwest. Seton Hall. Ten seeds. West, Oklahoma, East, Murray State, Midwest, Georgetown, South, NC State, 11 seeds, South, Ohio State, East, Belmont, West, UCF, play in game Midwest, Arizona State against Minnesota, and my last at larges, 12 seeds in the East, Dayton and Utah State. And the rest are my projected auto bids. I have winning the Southern Conference, the SoCon, UNT Greensboro, and I have them 12th in the Midwest. And in my 12th seed in the South, and I have them winning the Atlantic 10 tournament, the Davidson Wildcats. And my 12th seed in the West is New Mexico State. 13 seeds. East Vermont, West UC Irvine, South Texas State, Midwest Drake. So no Loyola Chicago in the tournament because right now I have Drake slated to win the Mountain Valley Tournament. I'm sorry, Missouri Valley. 14 seeds, South Liberty, West Old Dominion, East Yale, Midwest Montana, 15 seeds, Radford's in the South. West, South Dakota State, Midwest, Hofstra, East, Lehigh, 16 seeds. East, Northern Kentucky, South, Sam Houston State, Midwest, play-in game, Norfolk State against San Francis, Pennsylvania. And 16 seeds, West region, play-in game, Prairie View, A&M, and Iona. Before I do my best bet, the Ottawa Senators fired Guy Boucher. News broke around 10 o'clock this morning. 
I predicted this before the season that he'd be fired at some point. But I thought they'd wait till the end of the season to do it, but they do it before the season ends. I think they want to give assistant coach Mark Crawford a look, and that's who's the intern coach right now. So part of me is not surprised, but the other part of me is a little bit. This team's obviously rebuilding. They trade away Eric Carlson before the season. They traded away Mark Stone and Matt DeShane and Ryan DeZingle at the trade deadline. I think there's more guys to be dealt this summer in Ottawa as they endure a long rebuild. And I think that Crawford's going to end up being the favorite to replace Boucher long term. As of right now, we'll see how they play under him. And there's obviously going to be a lot of big names available to be coaching. But I don't know if they'll go after Joel Quinville or Lane Vigneault or Daryl Sutter. Because those are guys that I think want to coach contenders rather than rebuilding teams, per se. And I think that's why the Rangers moved on from Vigneault. Because they wanted to rebuild. I think that Chicago moved on from Quinville. Because I think they want to sort of go into a rebuild mode a little bit. And then the Kings got rid of Daryl Sutter a few years ago. so And they were still pretty good when even after they got rid of Sutter, they made the playoffs, I believe, one time. And then uh, I get, it looks like they regret that move because they made a coaching change this year as well. And I'm very interested to see what happens. Maybe Dan Belisma will be in play with Ottawa because... Belisma obviously coached a rebuilding Sabres team, and then they let him go in favor of Phil Housey. And I think Housey's done a great job in Buffalo this year. So maybe he'll be available to Ottawa, but I think Mark Crawford's going to be their long-term head coach. And I don't know if Guy Boucher will ever get an opportunity in the NHL again. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. You never know. And now on to my best bet of the day, brought to you by FanDuel. Last night, I obviously lost because Washington lost the cow. So tonight, Yale, Lipscomb, Dayton, Buffalo, Flyers, Knights, Sharks. Plus $7.72. I wagered $3.95 with a payout of $34.47. One money line pick tonight, and that is the Los Angeles Lakers. Plus 144, wagering $5 to win $12.20. That's it for the podcast today. I'll be back tomorrow recapping everything from college basketball, NBA, NHL, spring training, and looking ahead to tomorrow's games as well. And I'll obviously have my best bet for you guys as well. Hope you guys have a great day, everybody.